Yeah, guys, welcome to round two of the F1 Manager 2024, my team career. Guys, it is a Saudi Arabia Grand Prix coming up and we are right at the beginning of the race week. So we jump straight away into managing and we started with having a look at driver stats and mentality. Even closer looks to Nico Hülkenberg. How happy is he? personal situation, team performance, team principle. Then I quickly checked about all the stats that we could put in. And uh, last but not least, we were having a look into his focus and ultimately into facility bonuses. And there I found out I missed to do something last week, which was building a couple of more facilities. I was quickly wondering whether it was smart to do or not to do from a cost cap point of view but uh, I decided anyway it is very important that we have a race simulator that we have a team hub that we have a memorabilia room if that is a word and a tour center not to forget why is that important simply because that increases the team marketability as you can see on the right hand side um, so I was also thinking about the helipad and hospitality area and I think in the end of the day, I was like, you know what, we have the money, uh, we're, we'll, we will look for sponsors soon anyway, just literally build everything that we can build in order to improve the marketability, because that will be the important part where we are going to make money from, and where we are able to um, attract more sponsors with and get even more money and maybe even at some point come close to what is considered the upper end of the cost cap. Speaking about cost cap, we were heading into the finance area quickly checking how we are doing. Obviously you see a lot of red here because we have put a shed load of money into new HQ into building new facilities, into designing and building new parts. But most importantly for me was to see, okay, what is like the weekly balance that we can sort of rely on, that money that's coming in. As we can see on the cost cap, we have 42% remaining only. Um, so we need to start checking how that will pan out in the end of the season because still 22 races to go. However, again, it is very important that we upgrade those facilities in order to improve for the car. So after a quick check of the sponsor activities that are still planned and conducted, remember from last time we have eight weeks to make the sponsors happy, I then had a look into our pit crew and our pit crew's performances, our pit crew practice and training and I have to quite say this is where I got a bit lost I want to certainly improve the team's overall performance as you can see on the right hand side right now use tires off use tires on uh, not really a big change at all if anything uh, so I start to click randomly around trying to desperately get these stats up and um, it took me quite a while hence I sped this up here for the video however um, as you can see, the chance of mistake plus 19.3%. I am pretty, pretty sure that ultimately I will have to review the pit box training or the pit crew training after all again, because um, I am not sure how good these guys will do in the long run. Anyway, it was about getting ready for Jeddah. So we were looking into the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix pre-race briefing and you guys remember that our car is not so bad in high speed corners but even worse in low speed turns and this is an interesting circuit because we have a lot of high power um, and high speed turns so I think our car should maybe not just be as bad as it was in Bahrain remember we finished 18th and 19th or in the 18th and 20th so I wanted to uh, hopefully at least get those results in but play it safe at the same time. Regarding the strategy um, everything is looking for a one stop here 
uh, we will see how that pans out later on in the race. So let's go into the actual race week. Very important emails that we received because it is a new period of aerodynamic testing regulation and CFD and wind tunnel testing time. So you guys remember from the first race that we did, it was we, we used up all the time in order to uh, create a new chassis or a new, a new um, underfloor part and a new front wing. So now we got six MAO hours and 92 hours of um, wind tunnel time in order to create better car parts, despite our engineers still being busy with the originally um, design plan. So after all, it is just about getting ready to race and care about the development again as soon as the engineers are freed up. Then we were talking about more pre-race briefing and uh, our sporting director Beat Zender informed us that the weather is going to be warm, no rain and obviously that our car is not really good enough aiming for points. Nothing too new for me, but still though. Um, a bit frustrating to read it. Anyway, we were then uh, hitting to the race targets for both our drivers and once again I felt like let's not risk it too much, trying to play it somewhat safe and maximize the income possible here from the sponsors. So I wanted to both finish ahead of 20th despite the car is presumably being 22nd best on the grid. Then this is after the quality, uh, after the free practices. I have managed the free practices myself, and for Oscar Piastri, I have almost had perfect race preparation. We have a hundred percent happiness with the car setup, Welcome which is mighty important here, uh, because you know on a street circuit, the more into your car you are, and here you can see it, car setup a hundred percent on Oscar. 89% on Nico Hülkenberg, but again, it is very important that drivers feel happy on a race course, uh, on a, sorry, on a street circuit. So, for qualifying then we wanted to go into two flying laps, because originally I think the very first attempt when going into qualifying has for whatever reason always been really, really good. I'm not sure whether that has to do something with traffic or not. Um, but it was my impression that going straight into the session and at the very beginning has been beneficial for our performance. And so we went out with both cars and let the AI actually deal with the tire and car warm up. So 27 corners here around Saudi Arabia and now we're just jumping into the flying laps of both cars. Um, we still keep it running on times four checking on the sector times from the free practice it was evident that we will not make it to q2 either way um, i have not really had high hopes in the first place but i also think that we should not starting or should not be starting that last so let's see how it goes after all um, first laps of us are in and we see that um, nico and oscar both are very very close to each other and the interesting thing was though in the first attempt Nico was faster than Oscar once again indicating how good of a qualifying driver he is because remember it was Oscar that had the 100% performance or the 100% readiness on the car and on the car setup um, arguably you could say I, I screwed it up a little bit with Nico despite 89% is absolutely fine for um, a good qualifying result. Anyway, we were learning a little bit more about car conditions, about damage, about car part damages and possible repairs. As uh, these tutorials, they come in every now and then because I'm in my very first season and I really want to make sure I'm not missing out on anything here. Either way though, Nico and Oscar have been on their cooldown lap in the meanwhile, going for their second attempt and as you can see, uh, on the leaderboard on the left uh, that Nico and Oscar have only been less than a tenth separated from each other with uh, Oscar being the second fast driver 29.190 
and I think we've had an improvement for Oscar here jumping Nico by another good tenth, actually 120 thousands overall. Um, sending him for P8 at the minute, and that was a bit. I was like, what P8? But then I found out, yeah, like only Magnussen so far has been slower than us, so that was a little bit of a, of a sad story. And then it was 12 minutes to go. When we came back to pit roads, I was like, let's not waste another soft tire because I think it's more beneficial to have fresh tires for the race. So I sent the guys out for the very, very last moment. And unfortunately, Oscar could start the lap, but Nico was not able to start the lap. So with Nico, we were doomed starting in 21st. Actually, very disappointing. On the other hand, though, as you can see, Oscar Piastri just 15 thousands behind Ocon for a better position as I was checking the leaderboard already and saw hey somehow we're not even that far off from Logan Sargent in P16 and even Pierre Gasly in P15 for a potential Q2 qualifying so could we make it in the end absolutely closer than I expected it to be so I kept checking and I was like how is Piastri doing? How is his sector times looking? And um, as we can see, sadly not really an improvement coming up. You see two yellow sectors here. So he would need to be an absolute wizard in the final sector to make it to Q2 or even improve the, the, the overall positioning. Let's see, 28.9 to B, then it's a 29.2 two or three he did in the end so once again no improvement once again proving the point that it seems to be the very first lap that happens to be the best so 21st and 20th on the grid if we're looking into the q1 results after all it is not too much missing yes we've beaten Zhou Guan Yu but ultimately we're only two and a half to three tenths away from q2 so uh we, we are looking forwards to those desperately car updates from the front wing and the underfloor then i got a bit mad on the strategy hence i sped up again the video um in order to not waste too much time here i somehow wanted to trick the machine i was looking uh, why is there uh, no one stop as indicated beforehand, but it appeared to be that anything I did uh, No matter whether I want to push a hard tire or conserve a soft tire. It seemed to be that um, For whatever reason for Nico the one stop was being faster the than the two stop anyway into the race we go slides out and, slides out and away we go. Yes Crofty that's obviously your turn on having a say here and I was like, guys, just dive it up the inside, do something. Um, here I thought, okay, cool, that is our front wing gone for Oscar Piastri. Thankfully, it was not the case. Um, I also decided to underfuel both cars by a lap because I felt from Bahrain on uh, there is a good opportunity that you're saving up the fuel easily throughout the race. And uh, so we went into the race with one lap short of fuel anyway. Lap one with then 50 total laps to do and we jump straight into lap eight because in lap eight there was an incident happening out on track that brought out the safety car. Safety car. And the good thing charged, when the safety car is coming out because of a crash when you're last and dead last or second to last there is a high probability that you profit from it so i quickly decided to just get both cars in like you know you got nothing to lose here just pit the t um the guys give them both a hard compound i think like with oscar the second stint would have been way too long so i was like okay let's give him the heart just just make sure that we're not dying out on tires here and then I did the very same thing uh, with Hülkenberg, destroying his one stop, but I felt like it had to be done. There was an opportunity up the sleeve. It is a city circuit, hard to overtake, and we just had to bring both cars in. And 
There at the front, you can see our sister car, Piastri, coming in into pit road, now going to the service. Stop time on the bottom right, 2.85. And what a beautiful, beautiful double stack we did. It's just such a perfect choreography that we can see here on pit road. So, with the gamble that we took, that made us jump a couple of cars out of 22nd to 20th for Nico and out of 20th to 17th even for Oscar Piastri. So, and I then said, okay guys, this is the opportunity, save the fuel that you're able to push on later on. But you've seen we're already in lap 9, yes, we've done already a lap under safety car, but we have already consumed or it made up 50% of the required fuel saving that we had to do after just 20 laps of racing and then lap 13 it was green 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 again restart safety cars in and we went into mode push just remember overtake is available Copy. Trying to make some moves. Finally, a good yep. dive bomb of Nico Hilken, but but then he pulls out in the middle of the move, kind of pulling out of the three white situation. But suddenly he appeared to be ahead of the cars anyway. So um, great job from Nico Hilkenberg here around the outside of turn three, getting into P19 and P17. Hülkenberg actually on the medium tire, Piastri ahead in 17th and then we went on. Obviously we had to redo the strategy after we have destroyed both plans. It was lap 24 where I decided, okay, let's uh, let, let's see how, what we're doing here towards the end of the race. And um, this is where the fresh soft tires that we have um, saved from the qualifying came into play. At least for Nico, we put him back on the soft. For Oscar, it was a bit of a different story. It seemed to be that the driver preference itself appeared to be better on the... No, actually, I put both on the soft in the end because I was like, we have a fresh soft, just, just use them after all. Lap 28, then I made sure that we have not missed anything on the strategy point of view. And I was like, yep, okay, everyone is coming in again. So we were in P15 and P18. And here you see the medium tire of Nico Hülkenberg actually being much, much better than the hard tire of Piastri. Remember, we have swapped these around in the end. And that was ultimately a mistake on my end. Uh, should have also taken or kept the medium as planned for Oscar Piastri. Anyway, it was lap 31. We then went for our pit stops. And for our final pit stops, both cars on the soft. Uh, first, I think so um, now, I have pulled Copy. in Nico Hülkenberg and then a lap later I went for Ooh, Piastri. Yeah, this really time I didn't really top. want to put them on a double stack because there was just no necessity to, um, to, to risk any issue whatsoever, risking both cars being held up ultimately by the same mistake. So I set Hülkenberg in and I configured then the pit stop for Priyastri just a lap after. Well, lap after is what I thought is going to be. At the end of the day, I went for another double stack. So I uh, actually effed up hitting the next lap button or the, simply the call for Nico was too late anyway. Nico came in into the pit lane roughly with a gap of I think 12 seconds it was let me see yes roughly 12 seconds between Nico and Oscar here we come to pit road two three four seconds and a car still not going drama in pit lane for Nico who can put 6.6 seconds so already a bad pit stop of our crew the third pit stop of the season Actually, the fifth that went wrong. Thankfully, the sixth went better with Oscar having a three second pit stop. Um, and that literally gave me a headache because remember what we did prior to the race regarding the pit roads and the pit crew and the practice. So I have to review that on the course towards the next race. Then, final lap no position changes so far. P15. 
P19 much better than expected and in the end I was like just guys push push get all the remaining fuel out of the car get the remaining battery out of the car and then was Nico Hülkenberg on the run to the start finish straight he actually went for a move there on the Alpine securing 14th position making a move on the final meters of the race and then I switched over to Piastri and to my surprise he was also on the back end of uh, Alpine and let's see what happened there Another late move, sprint towards the line, and P18 for Oscar Piastri as well. Absolute ecstatic, epic finish in the last lap of that race here. Making it P14 and P18 completely unexpected for me. First that we are better than P17 or P18 overall, but in the end even 14th and 18th. That has been an amazing result. And I've been genuinely happy with the car performance, with the team performance. And actually that made that made me feel like, hey, during the season at some point there's going to be points on the line. So let's go. No points for us so far at least. Same as Williams, Alpine, Haas and Sauber. So not the end of the world yet for us uh, that we haven't got any uh, any points done. On the pit stop leaderboard, we are sitting P9 with a 2.604. That was from Bahrain, though. Obviously, DHL fastest pit stop. No chance for us there. Quick report. We see here the issue lap 31 with Nico Hülkenberg. But I have to say, the pit crew is doing still a very good job. So, about the race targets then. I have not set them ambitious enough, apparently. However, I'm very glad for 500,000 dollars of money so Haley pet memora billiard room and i think the simulate no not the simulator being completed i think it was a part that we designed that was completed yes indeed a new front wing up for building in our facility so th guys that already sets the scene for round three the australian grand prix thank you so much for watching hope you've enjoyed the video any feedback any criticism any thumbs up please do it on the video give it down in the comments area below let me know what you think of the game so far of our and also of the format of this video and then guys i hope to see you back for melbourne for episode 3 on the F1 Manager 2024 MH10 Sim Racing Team.